everyone. Um, thank you for joining us this evening for our uh, Take Root Milwaukee's uh, Keep Your Home webinar. Uh, we are grateful that you're interested in this topic. We have some great panelists that are going to be that are joining us. Uh, Bethany Sanchez from the Metro Milwaukee Fair Housing Council, Emmett Gross from Housing Resources, Marlo Fields from WISCAP, and Amy Coles from Mediate Wisconsin. Each of them are gonna talk a little bit about uh, some specific programs that are uh, important and relevant to the topic of uh, keeping your home. And um, we're gonna dive right into that. I have um, uh, some slides and I will uh, manage the slides. And for those who are in the audience, um, if you have questions, uh, feel free to post them in the chat and I'll do my best to um, monitor that as well. So here we go. All right. Oh, a little bit about Take Root Milwaukee before Bethany gets started. Take Root Milwaukee is a membership consortium that's made up of the housing counseling agencies, one of whom you'll hear about, uh, hear from tonight or today, um, lenders, realtors, neighborhood groups, and nonprofit organizations that work to promote home ownership and neighborhood stabilization throughout the Milwaukee area. We have a website and a hotline, and if you have any questions, we encourage you to utilize either one of those um, ways to communicate with us. So the first person that we're gonna hear from is Bethany Sanchez. She's the Senior Administrator of Fair Lending for the Metropolitan Milwaukee Fair Housing Council. Bethany, take it away. Thanks, Heather. Um, Yes, I work at the Fair Housing Council. I direct the Fair Lending Program there. And the reason I thought it made sense for me to go first is that if you or someone you know is having trouble paying your mortgage and you're looking for some help, um, don't. I, it's really important that you know that you should not pay for that kind of help. Um, it's almost always a scam and the person that's supposedly helping you um, almost always um, doesn't provide the help, even, even if you do pay them the money um, up front, which is actually illegal, um, that you, the, the scammers almost never provide actual help. Sometimes they do, um, but mostly not. <laughs> um, so, a rescue scam is a scam in where it, it's illegal for, um, I should just say that it's illegal to pay money up, it's illegal for someone to take your money up front for help with um, negotiating uh, some kind of a deal with your lender or, or helping you with some other ways to avoid foreclosure. Um, rescue scams come in a lot of different disguises. Um, some to be aware of are where the scam artist, um, often posing as an attorney, tells you that he or she can negotiate a deal with your lender in order to save your home. And you pay a fee. Often it's around $3,000. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. But once you pay the fee, the scam artist um, basically takes off with your money and um, and either you can't get a hold of them, or if you do get a hold of them, they say, well, you know, it's taken a while to, to contact the lender, we'll get back to you, you know, just all kinds of stalling tactics. And, um, and like I said before, typically the, the help never comes. Um, another way that scammers can take advantage of you as they ask you to make all of your mortgage payments directly to them while they negotiate with the lender and they act as if they're, you know, in, you know, they're working in concert with the lender. And um, unfortunately, after collecting your payments for a few months, um, the scammer disappears with your money and you still owe the lender and, um, and it's a big problem. Uh, we had we had a situation like that once um, several years ago, and the lady had paid 
um, on time payments. She was worried about foreclosure and she was worried about how long she was going to be able to make her payments, but she had made payments to this scammer for months and months and months. And um, she ended up in, in foreclosure. Um, another way that they could get you is you think you're signing documents for a new, a new loan to make your existing mortgage current, but instead you've given the scammer ownership and the deed to your house. Um, you surrender your title to your home as part of a deal that allows you to remain in your house as a renter and buy it back later. But really the fine print is that you lose all your rights and the scammer takes the equity in your home. So there's, there's lots of different ways that, that you can get scammed, but basically the, the short version of what I wanna say to you is one, don't pay for money upfront before you get any kind of service. It's not illegal for someone to, um, to help you to do, you know, avoid foreclosure for a fee, but we have, we, but it's, there's people that can do it for free, like Emmett, who will speak after me, and, and they're professional and legitimate and will do a good job and, and it will be free. Um, if you or someone you know has already um, been taken advantage of by one of these scammers, call the Fair Housing Council. We're a private nonprofit and we will help you to file complaints. Basically, we'll file complaints on your behalf and if all, at all possible, uh, we'll work to get your money back. We can never promise that we'll get your money back because sometimes we can't find the scan, scammer, but uh, we have had some successes with doing that. So call us for free help at 278-1240 and um, let them know that you have a mortgage rescue scam that you'd like to report and we'll, we'll uh, work with you from there. Um, and our help is always free. And um, that's basically what I wanted to say is uh, don't pay for it. It should be free. If you've already been scammed, call the Fair Housing Council and we'll help you to, to file a complaint and hopefully get your money back. Thanks Sorry. so much, Bethany. Really appreciate uh, you taking the time to explain that important distinction um, that never give people money up front. <laughs> Next um, on our panel is Emmett Gross. He is the retention manager at Housing Resources Incorporated. Um, housing Resources is a housing counseling agency that is he, uh, works here in the Milwaukee area. So Emmett, yes, thank you. Ready to <clears throat> dive into talking about the counseling that you can provide. Yes, um, Housing Resources is a HUD approved counseling agency. This is our 31st year uh, in existence. Um, and we do a lot of the work that Bethany had mentioned earlier on, helping people to work directly with their mortgage company to avoid uh, foreclosures or to come to a workout solution um, to address any number of issues. It can include foreclosure, but we do a lot of work with People have problems with their payments going up because of escrow issues and other things like that. So one of the things I wanted to talk about a little bit is what the foreclosure process is and what it means and what your rights and responsibilities and time frame is during that process. <clears throat> so to break it down, you know, foreclosure is the, is the legal process where the mortgage company or the lender is taking home taking your home as uh, collateral for an unpaid loan. Uh, Wisconsin is a judicial state. That means all foreclosure proceedings have to go through the courts. And you have to be at least four months behind on the mortgage for the foreclosure to start. And even once a judgment, foreclosure judgment is granted, there's still a period of time where you will still be in the home, generally three to six months, depending on uh, when the loan was originated. And during that time, you generally have the opportunity to continue to work with the mortgage company to come to some kind of a workout agreement. And I stress that because a lot of people have this fear that once foreclosure starts, they're going to come home from work one day and find the locks changed on their house and all the stuff, all their stuff on the front yard. 
Um, and that really can't happen. Foreclosure is a long process. You do have time to continue to work, to try and resolve the situation. And that's one thing that I um, want to make sure that everybody understands because I see a lot of people that don't realize they have the time and they make quick uh, um, decisions that actually put themselves in worse situation than if they had known a little bit more uh, about the time frame and the options that they have uh, to continue to work with the mortgage company. Um, so if we can go to the next slide and talk a little bit more about that. So um, in addition to uh, mortgage foreclosures, we also try to help people to deal with property tax foreclosures. Now property tax foreclosures are a longer process than mortgage foreclosures, but the biggest issue with property tax foreclosures is that the longer the process goes, the later you are in the process, the fewer options you have to resolve the situation. So whenever you deal with a property tax, tax situation, the quicker you can take action, the quicker you can come to a workout agreement, the better off you are. The best option, if you can't pay the property taxes all in one lump sum, is to work with the city and set up a payment plan. Um, generally, payment plans need to be set up before the end of January. Um, uh, so typically, tax bills will come out um, somewhere around the middle, late December, and you have until the end of January to either pay them in full or set up a repayment plan. And that's really important if you can structure the repayment plan, because if you do that, you will avoid all the interest and fees and penalties that would otherwise be charged if you went, uh, if you did not pay the tax bill in full. Now, if you go past the 31st and don't have a payment plan in place, you can still pay the taxes in bits and pieces. The city will generally still accept that money, but the interest and fees and all that stuff is, is adding up. So we see a lot of people that get in that situation and they're paying what they can, and they're essentially just paying down the, the fees and the interest that they're being assessed. And even after you know 10 or 12 months of making the payments, um, they they really haven't gotten anywhere because of the cost of the interest and fees. So the thing with taxes, I'm really stressed. If you know you're not going to be able to pay them, um, do what you can to set up that payment plan before the end of January. It'll make the whole situation a lot more affordable, and it's, you'll be considered in good standing. You won't be considered delinquent on the taxes as long as you're in that repayment plan and making those payments. So it preserves your options. It keeps the um, situation as affordable as possible, and it you know protects your ownership in the house. A big thing too with property taxes is that under state law, the interest and fees really cannot be waived uh, on the taxes. And we've, we've dealt with the city, we've dealt with the state, we've dealt with lots of people about that, and um, so that's why avoiding those those fees and interest is really important because once they once they get rolled into the taxes they're they're there and there's nothing that you can do about it other than pay it and then like i said it just gets more and more expensive the longer uh the process takes so the earlier you take action the earlier you get something set up the better off you are um, the more options you have the more your rights are preserved and the cheaper it's going to be to resolve the situation you can go to the next slide. So ways to prevent foreclosure. Like I said, the earlier you start the process, the better. Um, and these are directly related to mortgage foreclosures. So the work that we help people do, among other things, is to help reach out directly to the mortgage company and try to negotiate some kind of workout option. And that can include a loan modification, a repayment plan, um, restatement, reinstatement options, if you have the money just to bring the loan current, or other things depending on the type of loan and the lender that you're working with. Um, the thing I want to stress is that with a loan modification, all, um, a lot of people have an idea of what modification means, um, and a lot of people are not super correct with it. So loan modification just means that something is getting changed on the mortgage. It can mean um, uh, um, things are done with the past due amount. Um, it can mean that interest rates are changed. It can mean that payment due dates are changed, but it just means that something is changed on the mortgage. So there's no guarantee with the mortgage modification that 
your interest rate will be reduced, that you'll even see the payment go down. Now, when we negotiate with lenders, we try and push and do what we can to get payments to go down, um, but that's not automatically part of a loan modification. So that's something that's really important to understand going into the process is that I've seen a lot of people turn down what are otherwise good modifications because the interest rate isn't changed or other things um, because you know they expected that to be part of the modification and it's not necessarily always part of it. What we need to look at is the bigger picture as to what's being done to get you current on the loan and what's being done to address the overall affordability of the loan. That's that's really the more important thing than you know any particulars about interest rate or anything like that. All right, we'll go to the next slide. So this, with the mortgage assistance program, I'm just going to mention this very quickly because I know the next speaker, Marlo, is going to go into a lot more detail on this because this is really the program that he works on. But I will mention that as an agency in uh, Milwaukee County, we do help with the Wisconsin Help for Homeowners program. We help to review and process uh, applications and refer them for approval. Um, they can cover a number of different bills, not just mortgage, a lot of expenses related to home ownership. Um, and um, I'll save the rest of that for Marlo because I don't want to take too much of, of his uh, topic. So um, I believe that's the last thing that I have. So um, I'll pass it over to Marlo then. Great. Thanks so much, Emmett. Really appreciate it. So the key to that is start um, with a housing counselor uh, early in the in the process um, when you start to feel like you might be getting a little behind and and uh, because the sooner that that process starts the better. Um, next up is Marlo Fields. He's the housing special specialist for WISCAP. And he's going to talk a little bit more about the fairly new program called Wisconsin Help for Homeowners. Arlo, take it away. Hey, thank you so much. Um, yep, so Marlo Fields with a housing specialist over at WISCAP. Um, I handle a lot of housing advocacy. Um, promoting policy that promotes um, anti-poverty initiatives and policy and helping to administer housing programs such as the Wisconsin Emergency Rental Assistance or WIRA and as we mentioned the Wisconsin Help for Homeowners Program, WHH. So WISCAP for those of you who don't know is an umbrella network of 16 local community action agencies or CAAs. Um, and two statewide agencies. And so we coordinate with agencies like the Social Development Commission or SDC in Milwaukee to act as an advocate for low income households at all levels of government, the private sector and with the public at large. Uh, we encourage and promote uh, the development of resources which demonstrate progress towards the elimination of poverty and more pertinent to this conversation, we help administer grants and contracts um, for the purpose of conducting programs, uh, in this case, housing programs. Um, so Wisconsin Help for Homeowners is a, is a, or a, was started through the American Rescue Plan, which uh, passed, uh, President Biden signed it into law in March of 2021, and it included many initiatives um, and services towards the U.S. public, but specifically there was about $9.9 .9 billion for the Homeowner Assistance Fund, um, uh, home emergencies uh, to prevent mortgage delinquencies and defaults, foreclosures and loss of utilities or home emergency services and displacement of homeowners due to the pandemic. So uh, to create the goal is to create a sustainable home ownership for people that were facing hardships due to the coronavirus. And um, uh, Wisconsin Help for Homeowners, of the $9.9 .9 billion from the American Rescue Plan, Wisconsin received approximately $90 million. Uh, of that, $70 million could be used towards providing direct financial assistance towards homeowners. And it's administered through uh, the Department of Administration and uh, managed by WISCAP, our agency. So starting around in, in March of 2022, and I was hired on in March of 22, uh, 
Uh, Wisconsin Help for Homeowners began accepting applications. Applications are processed regionally by 16 of our uh, 18 community action agencies. In Milwaukee, that would be the Social Development Commission um, with help by also Emmett. <laughs> uh, eligibility for the program. Uh, so to be eligible for Wisconsin Help for Homeowners, uh, Wisconsin, you need to be a Wisconsin homeowner. <laughs> Uh, that could be a single family home, a duplex, a condo, or a factory built home. Uh, you need to be financially impacted after January 21st, 2020, um, due to the coronavirus. Um, your household income needs to be less than or equal to 100% of either the US or county median. And so for Milwaukee, that would be about $90,000 dollars for a one to three person household and about 94,000 um, for a four person household. So Wisconsin Help for Homeowners covers um, up to $40,000 per household due to overdue housing related bills, including mortgage payments, um, including reinstatement costs, uh, property taxes, insurance, utilities, home energy costs, homeowner association and condominium fees as well. Um, I think I got them all. Uh, you must have suffered financial injury. Um, the program does not cover those that aren't behind. So, or sorry, I said that wrong. The, you, you must have already suffered the the injury, and not those that y you're you're pending or you're you're that it is the it, the financial injury must have already occurred. Sorry, I'm trying to get the <laughs> the, the correct policy term uh, happening, not something that is foreseeable. Um, you must already be behind in payments. Um, uh, so for foreclosures, as, as Emmett alluded to as well, even if foreclosure has started, you may have time to get assistance as well. Um, the payment structure, um, for so now we are getting in the weeds. So <laughs> the payment structure, so if, if your award is less than $10,000, it is structured as a grant that you don't have to repay. Um, if it is more than $10,000, it's still more or less, a, 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 it, it's structured as a one-year non-interest, non-amortizing, oh my goodness, that's a lot, forgivable loan um, that you would have to repay only if you were to sell, refinance, or transfer ownership of the home. Um, and payments go directly to the loan servicer, not the pay, homeowner themselves. So it's going to participating um, banks that are, are servicing the loan. And so, you know, the program's relatively new. It started in uh, March. So we're smoothing out a lot of bumps that are that come from just administering a program like this. But so far in Milwaukee, um, you know, it, we've made about 126 payments and approved or approved in our pending approximately uh, $800,000. Um, and statewide, we've uh, made about 632 payments or approved payments that are just pending uh, approval, uh, totaling about $4.3 million. And so as we're navigating, you know, three months in, a little over three months into this program, we're finding that you know, due to the complex nature of mortgages, this program is, is complex as well. Um, there's not one size that fits all uh, as there are complicated web of issues to making each case very unique. Um, you know, as, as you can imagine, those that are behind on payments uh, or behind on utility payments, just the nature of mortgages and the complexities, you're dealing with sometimes folks that you know, maybe uh, weren't involved with the, the buying of their house originally, maybe their their husband or one person in their family was, and now 
they have a mortgage that they have and they're behind on payments and uh, they might not understand that the nature of, of, of their mortgage. So, you know, our case managers try to really work to create a sustainable uh, plan and not just to give folks uh, a, a payment that, you know, if they don't have a plan for sustainability or a plan for financial sustainability, again, um, that maybe those payments wouldn't go towards, they would go towards, you know, getting them caught up to gate, but what good would that be if in a couple months they're behind on payments again? So our, our case managers know this and they work sensitively with these things to, to make sure that funds are allocated out correctly. So, you know, um, create a financial plan to foster housing sustainability for the foreseeable future. And uh, yeah, I think I ran that pretty quick, but Great. that's... That's Wisconsin Help for All Mothers in a nutshell. Thanks, Marlo. Just one really quick question um, yep. for clarification. Um, yep. The being financially impacted by COVID does not necessarily mean one had COVID themselves. They may have, or it could be that they lost their job or lost um, hours of their job um, because of of the pandemic. Yes. Okay. Yeah, correct. Great. Yeah. Thank you for that. Just That's wanted to make sure that we were clear yes, on that. Thank yep. you. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much, Marlo. Really appreciate it. Okay. Uh, next up, we have Amy Coles, who is the executive director of Mediate Wisconsin. She's going to talk about the Wisconsin Foreclosure Mediation Network and its program. And um, Amy, I did include all of your slides, and so we can just quickly move through them. Um, like you had talked about, that might be helpful to provide a little bit of background um, leading up to the work that's currently being done. That sounds good. Thank you. Yes. Um, so before I jump into this historical view, I just want to share a snapshot about the work that we do through mediation. The Wisconsin Foreclosure Mediation Network um, is a statewide network making mediation services available to homeowners who are facing the court-based foreclosure process. So to be eligible, um, someone must have an open uh, foreclosure filing against them. And in 23 counties throughout our state, um, the local courts have required that homeowners, when they're served the summons and complaint of foreclosure, uh, receive notification about this program and an application to the program. So that is primarily how people are finding out about us and getting connected with us and, and our network partners. Um, so as uh, Heather pointed out, I did wanted to share a, a little bit of background about kind of foreclosure trends in our state. And when I started in this work in 2009, um, nearing the height of the foreclosure, mortgage foreclosure crisis, everyone referred to the year 2000 as kind of baseline normal level of filing. So we can see here at the bottom left-hand corner of this chart that a normal level of filings was considered about 6,400 cases in our state. And you can see in 2009 and 2010, we were over 28,000 filings, okay? So in the next slide, we can see that subsequently, um, you know, the, the filing levels continued to trend down, but even as of 2019, we were still a little bit higher than those 2000 baseline filing levels. Um, but you can see there in 2020 that the, the numbers really dropped. And in the next slide, I have um, a little detail. Oh, um, well, okay, so 2019, yeah, let's look at this one, I guess is the 2021 shows the best information about how the um, federal- running this one, Amy. If we can go forward to the one um, that says 2020. Um, state and federal efforts um, that required um, foreclosure filings to be put on hold 
um, really kind of depressed filing levels. And I know there's been discussion and concern um, in some circles of what will happen when these you know, measures go away. And you can see in, in 2021, um, the next slide shows that the filings did increase a bit over 2020, but still the overall filings um, of 2029 um, cases filed in Wisconsin, it was still lower than in 2020, just because filing levels were at the normal levels in the first three months. Um, and again, there was federal guidance that, that really helped keep those numbers down. But you can see in the next slide that um, this year so far, there have already been 2,560 filings, which puts us past um, 2020 and 2021 levels. Um, but it does not appear to me that um, we're necessarily on track to surpass 2019, but we may. It's just a matter of seeing what's going on. But certainly things are a little bit more business as usual in terms of, of the filing levels um, of coming back. So with that in mind, just to share a little more about the foreclosure mediation and, and how we're different um, than, and we can go past this one too as well, just in, um, how we're different than the other services that we heard. Um, we don't have funds available to provide to homeowners who are facing foreclosure, but what we do is really um, help in a few ways because it's a court connected process. Um, you'll see that we have the involvement of not only the mortgage servicer and the homeowner, but also their attorneys. And we stay in communication at a very high level with the court in terms of where folks are in the process. Um, keeping in mind that mediation is a voluntary and confidential process. So any discussions that occur in mediation cannot be used as evidence for or against, against someone in court. And if an agreement is not reached through the mediation process, we don't share any details of that with the court either. Um, simply efforts did not result um, in an agreement, but certainly if there is an agreement that becomes part of the court record. So again, um, it's really by saying informal process, that just means we're not in the court um, setting. Uh, this isn't a hearing where there's a stenographer and it's not open to the public. Um, and it really is set up to help, like I said, open lines of communication, um, with the goal as stated on this slide of really helping the port parties avoid preventable foreclosures. I mean, certainly, unfortunately, there are circumstances where foreclosure is, is the outcome, but our kind of our secondary goal is really to help ensure no stone has been left unturned, so to speak, so that people engaged in our process on the lender side, understand the full financial picture of that homeowner. And on the homeowner side, they really understand what they've been considered for. And if they're not able to retain their home, why that is. And they've been given the opportunity through our mediation session, which is scheduled with either that underwriter or a representative from the servicer who can really explain the outcome and what was considered there's an opportunity for some real dialogue and give and take um, with the help of that mediator to help explain terminology or ask questions that that um, homeowner may not know to ask. Um, and just as much as possible, make the process seem a bit more transparent. Um, we can move ahead to the next slide and the next one. Um, so I mentioned the um, financial information. We realized early on with this program, and I'm sure um, anyone else here can attest that without a complete and correctly filled out financial package, um, it's really not possible to go through that loan modification review process or loss mitigation process successfully. And I think a lot of people who try to navigate it without the help of a housing counselor or a program like our mediation process find that um, documents get outdated after a month or two. And so it's, 
or documents aren't filled out correctly. And so it seems like the servicer is constantly asking for documents and never making a decision on the file. So with our assistance through mediation and the support we can provide, we really help try to streamline that process. We use uh, an online um, portal to help exchange the documents and communicate with the servicer in real time to find out what's missing or where things are in the process to help, help keep it moving forward. Um, just a little bit about the mediator and their role in the process. The mediator does not act as a judge. They don't decide the outcome. They're really there to um, facilitate the conversation, facilitate the process. Um, although I'm an attorney and many of our mediators are, we cannot give legal advice. So if there are issues that arise that um, seem like they warrant legal intervention or guidance, we certainly will refer out to other um, legal partners that we work with. And um, again, really just trying to help facilitate discussions so it, the discussion so it stays um, productive and informative for all parties. Um, in the session, we do try to get out details that maybe that homeowner doesn't have current information on um, the status of the loan. Um, and maybe the lender doesn't have current information on the status of that homeowner's financial picture. So we help with that. And there's also an opportunity for the lender's attorney or the servicer's attorney to explain where things are in the foreclosure process and what happens um, after the mediation. So and I think I touched on this earlier, but Often uh, the session, which can take place in person or via phone or Zoom like we're doing now, is um, the mediator, the homeowner. Um, if there's two borrowers, they can both be present. If it's just a support person, they can be present as well. And then there's oftentimes um, the servicer representative is always in participation with their attorney. And if the homeowner has an attorney, they're welcome obviously to, to participate as well. Um, and the point to have all these folks involved um, because it is a court connected process is that um, we're kind of stepping out of that litigation mode in a more collaborative mode to try to find solutions. But certainly if it's not possible to reach a solution, um, you know, the, the court case will continue and, and the participants haven't given up any legal rights by by participating. Um, some of these topics um, Emmett had touched on in terms of the types of workout options that help homeowners keep their home or other strategies that could help them avoid foreclosure but not maybe keep the home, those are all available in this process. Um, if a loan modification um, is available to that homeowner and they choose to accept it through mediation, We'll write up a, a mediated agreement, but ultimately the, the loan documents come from the mortgage servicer. And I, just real quick to share about um, something that came up just in the past week here uh, with a, a homeowner who'd gone through a mediation process. Uh, he entered into a trial modification. He had asked in the mediation session, was there any down payment or upfront payment required and said he asked it twice and he was told no twice. He signed the documents um, and was prepared to make his payment and it wasn't accepted. And he was told that the agreement included a down payment that was due on May 31st and his first trial payment was due on June 1st. So our mediator uh, with my encouragement reached out to the servicer's attorney and said, this was explicitly discussed in mediation. There was no down payment required and the attorney for the servicer agreed and helped to reconcile that. And they're sending him new paperwork that's gonna allow him to, to keep um, the trial modification as explained in mediation. So that was, um, I think, highlights the benefit of being able to have all parties in, engaged in that process. So, and this is just our contact information. You can 
uh, apply online at mediatewisconsin.org on the page related to foreclosures and you can search the specific um, county uh, based on zip code and certainly uh, toll free and direct number in our office in Milwaukee. Great. Thanks so much, Amy. Really appreciate it. Informative um, in, in giving a little bit of background and also steps of the process. Uh, very helpful. Thank you. Um, so that comes to the conclusion of our um, presentation. I'm going to end the slideshow and um, open up uh, for uh, any questions uh, before we uh, adjourn this session? Okay. Well, thank you again, um, all of you uh, for attending. Um, and thank you so much for your speakers, uh, for the speakers, Bethany, Emmett, Marlo, and Amy. Um, for presenting uh, this very, very informative um, materials about how to keep your home. Um, again, my name is Heather Dumer Combs. Um, I'm with Take Group Milwaukee. And uh, thanks again, everyone, for uh, your time today. Thank you.